This is a much more efficient way to catch the wind. So for a given amount of wind, you're producing much, much more power than a, a traditional sail of the past. Marine shipping is responsible for more than 80% of international trade. Actually, take a look around you right now. Most of the things you see, your phone, your laptop, even the fruit in your fridge, probably arrived by sea. But it's also a polluting industry, accounting for 837 million metric tonnes of CO2 every year. That's more than 2% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But the International Maritime Organisation has set the industry a target to reach net zero status close to 2050. And as we often find on Razor, solutions can come from the past. In this case, a technology more than 5,000 years old. This is what the future of shipping could look like. They're called wind wings, and I'm here in Portsmouth on the UK's southern coast to meet the team, starting with co-founder Simon Schofield. So Simon, your company is building these wind wings, as you call them. They're going to be putting them on bulk carriers and tankers. What change will that bring to the shipping industry? So the shipping industry has a, a requirement to decarbonise and wind wings provide a secondary source of power. It reduces the amount of fuel consumption and associated emissions. Many ships run on what's known as heavy fuel oil. Along with carbon dioxide, it also lets out tiny particles called black carbon, which can contribute to climate change and also cause health problems in humans. So ships need to turn to cleaner energy sources like hydrogen and wind. The idea for wind wings actually came from one of the world's oldest international sport tournaments. Quicker to find the speed. You started out working on boat racing technology. How have you transitioned to these wind wings? Yeah, so our, our heritage is in the America's Cup and we were Benazi racing. But the America's Cup generally ends up keeping the, the knowledge very insular within the industry. But we want to do things a little bit differently and we formed Benazi Racing Technology, BAR Technology as it's known now, to take that, that knowledge and the tools and the engineering talent and apply it to the wider marine industry with a focus on decarbonisation. They aren't the only ones reinventing the sail, but they are the first to go out on their maiden voyage. The wind wings have been installed on this container ship, the Pixis Ocean, which can carry 80,000 metric tonnes of cargo. It left China for Brazil in August 2023 and took around six weeks to arrive. OK. Well, this is a thing of, well, it's quite beautiful, really, but it seems strange. Like, how on earth does this catch the wind? Yeah, so this is the model of wing wings. It's a three element rigid wing. So you've got the leading element, and then we've got the main element, and then you've got the trailing edge element here. And by manipulating those, we end up with a highly cambered shape, which gives us the crescent shape and gives us the power that we need. Why three elements? Three elements is kind of key to the principle of this wing. And uh, by having three elements, effectively you produce these slots between the elements. So what does the slot do again? So you can imagine the wind is flowing around the wing and we don't want that wind to spin off into a vortex. So the slot allows the wind to channel in and it keeps it attached to the wing and stops the wing stalling. You would think with the slots it would create drag, but it doesn't. No, whenever you produce lift, there's some drag associated with it, but the lift outweighs the drag significantly. All right, I'm on my tanker, I've got my wind wings and I want to go that way. How do we shape the wings? So actually what's important is the direction of the wind. Wind is coming from, from you. The wing would align like this and it would become cambered so the leading and trailing edge is forming a, a crescent U-shaped section and that accelerates the wind across it and that's what produces the power. And if the wind was coming from the other direction, the wing would rotate and then the leading and trailing edges would rotate the other way to form that crescent shape in the opposite direction. Why is this crescent shape so important? Um, if you imagine um, a aerofoil section, normally it's got some what we call camber, some shape to it, and that's the way uh, aerofoils work. It effectively means that the wind has to flow quicker around one surface than the other, so it produces a high pressure and a low pressure, and that's what produces a thrust that pushes you along. It sort of screws with your mind a little bit, because I think of, of sails billowing you know, on, on a yacht, and, and these surfaces are, you know, they're kind of flat, aren't they? 
Yeah, so this is a much more efficient way to, to catch the wind. It's relying on the, the shape of an aerofoil section. So for a given amount of wind, you're producing much, much more power than a, a traditional sail of the past. And how tall are these? So the aerodynamic span is 37 and a half metres. But once they're mounted onto deck, you're 45, 50 metres off the deck to the top. The core of this central element is 10 metres, and then the leading and trailing elements are 5 metres each, so in total 20 metres across. Very large structures. So the control of the wing, the camber, the positioning, and all the safety monitoring alarming is all automated. So all the crew have to do is effectively say, we want the wing on or we want the wing off and all the rest of the process is automatic. So we are monitoring the wing conditions we're seeing on the ship, and then we're using software to determine the optimal settings to maximise the fuel consumption saving. These wind wings, it's a whole new way of approaching sailing, but I guess we saw some of that in the yacht racing, haven't we, as well? Yes, in the previous America's Cups, the one in Bermuda and the one prior to that in San Francisco, we saw the adoption of, of wings. Wings are very efficient. They provide more power for a given area, which obviously trying to design a, a boat to win the America's Cup. It's a direction you want to go as well. They work slightly differently in that uh, we are looking for raw power and raw grunt, if you like, on a ship. Whereas in the America's Cup, because they're much lighter and more nimble, we're looking for very efficient high lift to drag ratios. That was the important part of developing these, is understanding that, that challenge. The sails won't replace engines entirely but aim to cut down a ship's lifetime emissions by around 30%. But the effects are not just over the long term. All right, Alex, so this is the journey that the um, Pixis Ocean took. So it was started off somewhere near Shanghai, and then we worked down all the way to Brazil. What kind of data are you looking at? What are you analysing here? Um, so there's two main things we're looking at. Firstly, we're looking at uh, how the wings are affecting the journey, so how, what are the fuel savings? Um, and then the second thing is, uh, is the data what we expect it to be? And so how does it compare to what we predicted and what we simulated? Were the predictions accurate? So far, they seem pretty good. Our savings in areas are better than we thought they would be. Typical boat speed is looking at about 15 knots with the wings. Um, without the wings, it's a bit slower. So essentially, um, putting up the wings is actually helping to accelerate the vessel and increase the speed. All right, can you show me some of the, some of the figures here so we can have a look? Of course. The longest uninterrupted sailing period that we had was 39 hours long. Um, in this period, we've got some really great fuel savings. So if you look at this segment here, this is um, a 24 hour length segment within that 39 hours. Um, and we're looking at savings of around nine, 10 tonnes per day. Um, there's two wings on Pixis Ocean, so that's looking at about 4.5 to five tonnes a day fuel savings, which is really, really good news for us. The savings depend on environmental conditions. A similar vessel without wind wings would burn 15 to 20 metric tonnes of fuel a day, so the Pixis Ocean has saved around 20 to 30 per cent. I mentioned to Simon that I was struggling to visualise just how big these wind wings are, and so he's offered up a virtual tour. Yep, you're going into the virtual Pixis Ocean world. So this is the first installation for the ship that's just arrived in Brazil. Uh, so in you go. Okay. All right. So now you should be able to see yourself on the ship. Oh, here we go. Oh, now I can see the size. Gosh, that's incredible, isn't it? You can walk around, you can navigate around the ship using your, okay. your left and right hand. So do I just go and... Oh, yep, there you go. There we go, I just walked through a wall. Hang on. <laughs> there you go, so you can see all the hydraulic piping. Oh, fantastic. God, look at this. All the mechanisms inside. Yeah. And I can go, right, what, up? Yep, so you're inside the steel spar at the moment. Yeah. So up the centre of the main element, there is a steel spar that yeah. transfers all the, the structural loads uh, and has all the mechanism running inside it. And then the aerodynamic shape on the outside is the composite. I'm going straight up to the top. It's like an elevator. Bop. And here we are on the top. Yeah. How many wind wings can you fit on the deck of a tanker or a...? It depends on the size of the ship, so a small handy max or a small, small tanker. You'd have just one wing on the front, but a large ship, like a VLCC, will have four, five, maybe even six wings. The vessel you're on is a Cancer Max, and that would normally have three wings fitted. And what's the lifespan of these wings? They're designed and classed for a 25-year life, 
but they don't have to be fitted to the same ship for 25 years. So we're already seeing people investigating and fitting them to a, an existing ship for say 10 years to extend the life of that ship before they move them to a, another ship later on. Would they be easy to recycle? Yeah, they are to a certain extent at the moment. They more than pay back their, their carbon footprint. They do that very, very quickly, of course. The main steel structure, so the main part of the wing is obviously 100% recyclable. The composite elements, there are still challenges around that, but we are using the same technology as the wind turbine industry, and they're obviously working very hard of, at, at recycling their blades. So we believe in, in 25 years when they become end of life, that'll be a problem that's solved, but we can't delay with the hope for that to be happening first. Yeah, what do you say to people who say, why don't you sort it all out before you start building these things? Yeah, I think if we try to solve every problem, then we'll be another 15 years down the line. That's 15 years of each of these ships burning one and a half tonnes per day, more fuel per wing. So, you know, we've got to start now and we've got to accelerate and, and deploy these as quickly as possible if we're going to achieve our, our targets for 2050. This is all uncharted territory because sails like these have never been tested before. And that means Head of Design Lauren Eatwell and her team have had to work with regulators to come up with the rules. So this is new tech, so I'm imagining that, what, there had to be new regulations? Yeah, it's been a real challenge actually. And we've been really lucky, I think, to work so closely with the classification bodies and develop the rules with them. We've been unlucky to be having to push that frontier because it hasn't been done for us. So what, in some ways, you were, you were making up the rules? Yeah, we've worked really closely with them and the ideas absolutely have gone back and forth of interpretations because we've got a lot of experience of how boats operate and how winds affect loading and a lot of simulation tools. So we've shared ideas and we'd go away and analyse them and we'd come back with, well, maybe it shouldn't be applied like that because we're seeing actually it's a bit more like this. So working with them to really shape the guidelines for the future design of wing propulsion. The wind wings were designed in Britain, but they were manufactured in China, a global powerhouse in the shipbuilding industry. I got to go and see the wings while they were under manufacture, and it was really exciting. It was the first time this thing that was on our screen, this big, was made full size, and it was a bit different seeing it face to face. <laughs> this factory is in Nantong, which is near Shanghai in China, and this is where all the metalwork and assembly was done. So they were responsible for building these large steel components and then also receiving delivery of the composite elements, so the skins, the aerofoil shape, from the composite factory and assembling it all together and then going on to factory acceptance testing, so where we connect it with the hydraulics, the electronics, the sensors, and we make sure that it all actuates together. And with the information that you've got coming off the vessel, you're, you're learning all the time, so the design will be tweaked. We're always looking for ways to optimise the structure, so that means saving weight and material, and also, like you say, analysing the data coming off the vessel. Validating our load cases is one of the most important things we can do, because wind technology like this hasn't been out in operation. So when we're working with the classification societies, developing the load cases, what we think these will be seeing in the real life environment, to have the data on shore, to post analyze that, and really drill into and learn from so that we can optimize the next design. The people I've met here have ambitious targets for the future of shipping and our world. They predict that by 2025, half of all orders for new build ships will include wind propulsion technology like theirs. The workshop's a little quiet, but I know that it, it's busy because you've got your first set of wind wings out there. Have you started to scale up already? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the second vessel is in dry dock at the moment. It belongs to us at the moment, it's called Burger Bolt, and they're having uh, they're having four wings fitted on a much bigger, larger vessel. Wow, OK. Now, you've been working with Cargill for the first set of wing wings, but, I mean, have you been approached by multiple companies already? Are they excited about the new tech? Yeah, literally, we have hundreds of companies now we're talking to, and that can be ship owners, ship charterers, and, and ship builders and, and the shipyards. So, look ahead for me, in, in five, ten years' time, where's BAR Technologies going to be? What are they going to be doing? For wind wing side, I think there'll be literally hundreds and hundreds of these wings on ships and we'll not just be servicing those wings, we'll be looking at new wind technologies, 
different sized wings for different sized vessels. Another looking at other decarbonisation techniques that, that combine with wind wings, so new builds of ships, different drivetrains, and really bringing the future ship to the market. Mm -hmm.